Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Hey, I'm Cap, Mike Kapler, along with the Breeze Man, Joel Brzezinski, and we have another week of Growing in Grace. Glad you found us. Uh, be sure to let a friend know, too. You can find all of our archived programs at uh, the new website. It's been up for just a, a little while now called growingingrace.org. All the programs from the past, how, how long have we been doing this? Has it been seven years 90 yet? 90 years, 90 long years. Oh, yeah. Well, about six and some. Okay. Six in a few months, but I guess. They're all still there, though, right? They are all there. I got a really great internet provider, uh, you know, web host, and I got lots and lots of storage room on there, so we could really do this another 90 years, and I'd still have enough storage room to do all these things, and I got unlimited bandwidth, so download away. Go to growingandgrace.org <laughs> and uh, just uh, download and tell your friends about it, tell your enemies about it, because uh, we want to bless their socks off, too. <laughs> well, this is holy ground, so take off your <laughs> shoes and socks, please. Yes. Um, hey, Romans chapter 4, Joel. Paul said, Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. And then he goes on to talk about how David even described the blessedness of the man to whom God imputes righteousness apart from works. And there's just, it just keeps going on here with some, some great stuff. It even goes on to say a few verses later that the, the law actually brings about wrath. And so, my, but one thing I wanted to point out here is though that God justifies the ungodly. For those of us who do not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly. Who, who is the ungodly? Wow, man, that's a good question. I guess uh, everybody. That's what I would think, too. <laughs> I, there is none righteous, no, not one. And we're talking, of course, apart from the gift of righteousness that we've received through Christ. Yeah, talking about, you know, before Christ, there was nobody righteous. Um, of course, the revelation of the new covenant, the revelation of the gospel, the good news, is that we have been made righteous to, to those who believe, it's not our righteousness, though, so this is something we've got to understand here. It's not that we're trying to be boastful about this or uh, try to come across like, as Christians, we're, we're better than other people or, or anything like that. We're, we're righteous, but it's His righteousness in us. It's not ours. There's nothing that you and I can brag about. Mm -hmm. And I think that's true with, with our works, too, because our lifestyle, no matter how good or godly you think you're living— it still comes up short. No matter how much good effort you think you're putting into living the Christian life, it's still filthy rags to God. So you see, it's because he killed us and we died, according to uh, the New Covenant, the New Testament, and some of the things that Paul wrote in there, we died and, and his life took over inside of us. And so none of us can, take, can, can boast or, or brag about how well we think we're living the Christian life versus this other person over here who's not living, uh, at least not evidently, living a good godly lifestyle. That doesn't make you any better than them just because you think you are. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, you know you're saying, you know, no matter how good a person's fleshly performance is, no matter how good their behavior is, it still filthy rags. And on the same very same note here no matter how bad your behavior is it's still filthy rags <laughs> it's, i mean it's we're all in the same boat it's just uh th there is no one righteous no not one there is no one better than any other there are people in this world i I've, i i believe that it was steve mcveigh that i heard these phrases from he talks about negative flesh and positive flesh people who kind of you know it's fleshly behavior it's it's perhaps our um the fleshly the matters of the flesh that we deal with some people are programmed perhaps to have more negative behavior and some people are programmed with more positively 
programmed behavior. Uh, you know, some people are, you know, apart from Christ, this is apart from our new nature, perhaps programmed more negatively. Uh, their, their behavior might not look as good as someone who has this so-called positive flesh. Uh, Steve himself would say that he, he had been programmed sort of with, with positive flesh. He didn't necessarily go around doing all those bad things that people were doing, but yet we're all, no matter how we're programmed, we're all in the same boat with, apart from Christ, having righteousness that equals filthy rags. And so it has to be by grace. It can't be by our works. And to go along with the, the verse from Romans 4 that you were talking about, Cap, I love this one in Romans 11, where Paul's talking about grace and works. He's contrasting them in a way that I, it's, it's uh, so simple and yet so profound. Romans 11, 6, and if by grace, then it is no longer of works. Otherwise, grace is no longer grace. <laughs> but if it is of works, it is no longer grace. Otherwise, work is no longer work. So if it's grace, then if any of our works are added to it, then grace has just been nullified. And if, it's, uh, if it is by our works, then it can't be of grace. It's, it's either one or the other. And uh, I am putting all my bets on <laughs> grace. I'm putting everything <laughs> on grace because whether I have negative or positive flesh or negative or positive good or bad behavior, it's got to be by grace and nothing else. Well, good points. I mean, it, it is one or the other, but over and over again, we hear people trying to mix up the two. It just happens all the time. And they do the same thing. It, it, it's, it's a parallel between mixing up the old covenant and the new. They shake them together, they mix them out, and, 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 and they mix them up, and then they, they pour them out, and it just causes a, a lot of confusion is what it does. And, and, and it can even, you know, things like condemnation can begin to inf inf infiltrate your life, uh, you know, feeling inferior and, and unloved, uh, unforgiven. Uh, those kinds of things start to creep in because we mix the two covenants up, grace and works, old and new, it doesn't work. And so, yeah, uh, good points there. And I know uh, a scripture that you have used over recent years relentlessly, and I, I love this whole passage of scripture here, but just to pluck this one out here, where Paul said uh, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not counting our, tr our trespasses against us, uh, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. So we, we mentioned how God justifies the ungodly, and, and he doesn't count our trespasses against us anymore. Why? Because of the finished work of Christ, the, the blood of Jesus. You see, the blood of animals under the old covenant just covered sin, didn't take it away. And so there was this constant returning back to the altar to, to uh, you know, commit our lives again to the, to the cause, to the law, and, and to trying to serve God. That, that's what the old covenant was, constantly going back, sacrificing animals that could never take away sin, and um, confessing sins onto the animal. And we, we, we carry a lot of that stuff over into our, our New Covenant Christianity, and, and it shouldn't be that way. Yeah, that's, that's true. And, you know, when the, the good news is in all of this, you know, that, like you said, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. And, and let me also add to that, too, just, just while we're talking about all this stuff, um, whether it's good behavior or bad behavior, there also is no room for pride. There's no room for condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, and there's no room for pride either or, or boasting. You know, obviously, one well-known verse in Ephesians two eight and nine talks about how uh, we've been. You know, it's the gift of God, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. Even our faith isn't our own. It's the gift of God, not of works lest anyone should boast. You know, if it was of our of our own works, then there would be room for pride. Um, and if it was of our works, I mean, there would be room for pride for a person who pretty much has, has really good works. <laughs> but there would also be room for condemnation for a person who doesn't necessarily live the most decent life, so to speak. And so all of that in Christ... This is this is the really good news here. All of that is wiped out in Christ. <laughs> whether you, whether you think you're living a pretty good life 
or whether you think you're not living the greatest life, whether you've just taken some really big falls uh, as far as your behavior, or whether you think you're living a really, really wonderful, great life for God, all of that is wiped out when we understand that it's grace. It's grace through which we're saved, and it's by grace through which we live. So the person, and you know, you started talking about earlier, Cap, about what, what about that person who's not necessarily, I'm using my own words here, not necessarily living the best life. He's in the same boat as the person who's, who's living a, a perhaps a more superior life behavior-wise, because, again, the bottom line, it's all about grace. We're all equal under the cross, Joel, and I think it's important, as we've talked about in the past, understanding our new identity in Christ, that our righteousness, our holiness, our perfection, all of this that now belongs to us is because of Him. Uh, These are gifts that have been poured out into us through the life of God that resides within us now. So when you and I criticize Another, person, another person's actions or lifestyle or condemn them or highlight their sin, we're, in essence, in, in one sense, we're bragging that we're doing it better. And do you see how, how the slippery slope gets you back into thinking about a gospel of works again? Now, what I am, or I should say what I do, does not make me who I am. Joel, sometimes I go throw the football, but I'm not a football player. I've been known to pound a a hammer onto a nail into a piece of wood, but I am not a carpenter, and my wife will testify to that. She, I'm so bad at trying to fix things around the house. My wife makes a honey don't list. So, you know, don't you dare, like the law. honey don't you but, dare list. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so what what I do or or even don't do, but what I do does not make me who I am. And Paul encouraged us as believers in Christ with this new life to allow to trust in him and allow this new life to flow through us so that you know a positive lifestyle reflecting god will 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 flow through us but it has nothing to do with our own efforts or our own decisions um there's just a lot of people out there who don't understand who they are in christ and they may not live the most godly lifestyle because of that they may be wallowing around in condemnation and and that can lead to a poor lifestyle, if you want to call it that, for, for a lack of better phrasing here. But on the other hand, like what Joel was talking about, there's a lot of people out there trying, still believers, trying to establish their own righteousness through good works and criticizing others for their sin, and, and that is, is a, flesh, a fleshly act as well. Yeah, bottom line for me is that indeed there is such a thing as, as godly behavior. There is such a thing as, as fruit in the life of a Christian. But when we get our focus on how good or bad, how well or how poorly our behavior is, then that's when we actually miss the mark because the focus really needs to be Christ in us and uh, the fact that we abide in Him. And, and he's the one that produces everything that, that flows through us. And so get our, let's get our focus on that. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.